Good morning everyone and welcome to the second day of the Innova Concrete School. We are uh, Sara Tana and Stefania Melandri by Warren Tab and uh, as yesterday we are live from the Warren Tab premises in Bologna, in, uh, in Italy of course. So uh, good morning, I hope you enjoy last day of conference and I hope you enjoy also uh, visiting our exhibition space in Gathertown. I briefly introduce you our, um, our program of today. Okay, this is the second day, as I said. The second day will be dedicated to the validation treatment of materials in Innova Concrete case studies. So today we will have uh, uh, partners from our, uh, our project that uh, have been working on uh, the validation of materials on our case studies. So on the Tour War uh, Memorial in Torizza La Peligna in Italy, um, in the Kaunas 9th Fort in um, uh, Lithuania, and in the Centennial Hall, and in the... Um, um, and in Poland, uh, in the railway station, but also in Spain, in the Eduardo Torroja Institute, and on uh, Elogio del Horizonte in uh, Gijón. So I will briefly uh, let you show uh, the video that I show also uh, yesterday to show you the features that Gather Town can give you if you have time to. Uh, to visit it. So I hope you enjoy it. that our exhibition space is open now until uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon at 6.30 p.m. This afternoon, if you have the occasion to navigate uh, in our exhibition space, you will find one of our colleagues, that is Lorenza Carabba. She is an expert of youth funding, so you can find her in Booth Blue where uh, you can uh, ask her for more information about how a research innovation uh, project works uh, and also she can give you interesting tips and information about uh, Next Horizon Europe calls, uh, um, especially on cultural heritage calls. So I remind you also our contest because participating to the Innova Concrete School gives you the opportunity to win a flight to Cadiz. I tell you why. You have to participate to all the three days of events. You have to keep attention of, uh, of be careful of all the presentation of our speakers because next week we will send you a questionnaire to fill in uh, with questions about the presentation you have seen during these three days. So uh, at the end, uh, our speakers will review all the questionnaires and the, the, the questionnaire with the highest score can win a flight to Cadiz to participate to the Nova Concrete Final Workshop that will be held from the 2nd to the 4th of December 2021. Many thanks for your attention. And now I, I give you the floor to our uh, first speaker of today. Our first speaker of today is Sabrina Gualtieri. She's a researcher in new technologies for the environment, construction, industry and cultural heritage at the Italian National Research Council 
in the Institute of, of Science and Technology of Ceramic Materials. She has a multi-year experience in the study of ancient ceramics and natural and artificial stones, and she is also interested in the study of ceramic raw materials and in the development of products and processes for restoration and green building. So many thanks, Sabrina, for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. It's a pleasure for us to uh, have you here. And uh, please, if you want to, to share your presentation, uh, the, the stage is yours. OK, thank you so much. I try. Yeah, we can <laughs> to share. OK, OK. First of all, I wish to begin uh, presenting you the excuses of Isabella Felice. And um, second, I start with the presentation. And um, as partner of Innova Concrete project, our rule was the, to select two case studies presenting specific problems of conservation and so useful for applying and validating the new materials developed by the other partners of the project. The choice considered the type of building material being the cement, the conservation problems, the social and economic aspects of the monument, such as their symbolic meaning for the citizens, their geographic location, and their building construction characteristics. There are a lot of cultural objects in cement, statues and other decorative elements that uh, considered as minor have the same importance of the most famous monument. I will remember it. At last, two monuments choose as our case studies and are the World War Memorial, First and Second War, located in a small village of Abruzzo region, Torricella Peligna, at 1,000 meters of altitude in the middle of the Sangro and Aventino Valley. Uh, the monuments to the fallen of the world, even if realized from artists not so famous, testify a very important period of the European history, which is still remembered and celebrated today in honor of all the people who gave their lives for the country and to remind future generations the horror of the world. Um, the activity of application and validation of the developed product was focused on the monument collected from the locals tower. It was designed by, in uh, 1950 by engineer Walter Sibona, and it was built in the 1961 for remembering the war victims, and it was wanted by the citizen committee. It is in the high point of uh, the village, where during the war, all the construction were destroyed. I would like to remind you that Torricella was on the Gustav line, an ideal line that crossed Italy, traced by the German to block the Allied force for liberation. The Gustav line is useful to the scope for the characteristics of the territory, with mountains, valleys, and rivers. Torricella was evacuated and became German headquarters and many were the leaves sacrificed during the occupation and period of the fighting. The tower has very similar construction features to those of a building with a structure of pillars and load bearing floors in reinforced concrete and claddings always made of concrete bricks. It's about 20 meters high and behind the highest point of the city completely uncovered, is very exposed from all the sides to the action of atmospheric agents. Bound, abundant uh, snow wall in winter, strong wind, and uh, exposure to the sunlight. It's important to remember that a correct plan of the conservation of a monument must include the analysis of the, on the, the state of degradation and at the same time, a good intervention project must foresee the study and observation of the environment in which the cultural object is located. The assessment of climate aspects is very important, and also the choice of material to be used for conservation and restoration. As concerning the conservation state, the monument showed major problems of rising humidity, certainly generated by the location of the pillars on the ground, 
with the consequent detachment of portions from the cement materials and the internal bars of armor very oxidized. At the direct site, it seems therefore even more subjected to degradation. Moreover, on the load bearing pillar, some previous restoration works consisting in application of different uh, cement mortars show the ready parcel detachment with micro and macro cracks, particularly concentrated near the reinforcement irons. The first step of our activity was the characterization of the material constituting the monument. A correct sampling plan addressed towards significant points allowed us to collect samples useful to investigate, investigate all the characteristics of the material, such as the microstructure, the porosity, the chemical and mineralogical composition, and the level of the decay. The information obtained were used to reproduce laboratory specimens of mortars on which the product developed by the partners were tested before to be applied on the monuments in situ. Here, the result of the characterization, and uh, we can see that the binder was only cement tissues, and the aggregate was the, made of local sand gravels, and the presence of uh, ethylene confirmed by XRD and SEM observation can be uh, explained by uh, um, uh, an alteration of the products. The areas for the experimental tests were selected considering the characteristic of the cementitious mortars, the level of degradation, and the type of the product to be applied. We selected the areas with different level of decay to verify the efficiency of the new products under different conditions and inside and outside monument. As good practice foreseen, before applying the products, the selected area were cleaning, were cleaned, sorry, by removing the superficial paint layer present on the walls. To this purpose, we used the cleaning systems developed by the CSG High that permitted us to completely remove the paint without any residuals on the surface. The product was, uh, was used directly applied in form of compresses. In some cases, an additional mechanical intervention was necessary. The CSG High systems were compared with traditional cleaning systems to verify the efficacy, the respect of treated surfaces, and the easy of application and use. The monument showed well separated area in which all the material developed in the, this IC project could be tested. In the slide, all the applied products are reported. Near the treated area, an untreated one was left in order to compare the parameters that would be investigated during the in situ analysis. In this way, the data obtained were more reliable and significant. The product was applied by brush up to the reject. This is the most simple and easy method, and it can better simulate the real situation, but not necessarily as well the optimum. In fact, during the restoration intervention in situ, the operators do not always have at disposal all the appropriate tools. So the common application by brush can be the only better and suitable tool to test the quality of the product and the usage properties. Concerning the test on mortars developed in the project, the same procedures of evaluation were followed. The areas of intervention were selected to take into account the characteristics of the mortars to be applied, the working times, the effects, the ease of application, and the chromatic compatibility with the original surface. In this two picture, you can see some example of the reconstruction integration of the lacune by using uh, the developed mortars. Uh, on the left, the photo of the application of yet mortars and um, in the towers, and uh, on the right, the presence of the um, application of some examples of, of the CSGI mortars. Uh, 
um, as concern uh, super hydrophobic products, it was applied in very exposed area of the tower as a protect over the external surface. In this picture, I would like to show the application of the same products by use the plasma method. And uh, at left, uh, before uh, and uh, on the right, after the application. You cannot uh, weekly darker color after application, but after one month, the color returns similar to the previous. Although the plasma system is still in phase of refining, the quality of the material applied has been optimal, both in the application and the amount of product applied. It gave excellent results with an infinitely reduced consumption of the amount of the product applied. As I said at the beginning, the cement heart works not always are buildings. Several are statues or decorative elements located on the facades of historical buildings. I'm sure that several of you noted these when walking around the street of your cities. This is the reason for which another important monument commemorative of the First World War in Torricella Peligna was selected. As you can see, it, is, it has quite different characteristics from the tower. First, it is in the center of a park, the Remembrance Park, in the lower place of the village. It has a square base with four literary bundles at the corners, and it is surmounted by an obelisk. The statue, internally in concrete, is represented while writing the names of the fallen in the Golden Book and crushing an eagle, the symbol of the Asburgs. It was inaugurated in 1922. It was damaged by an hurricane and was then bombed but during the Second World War. It was rebuilt in the 50s. It is protected from the atmospheric agents, but it's surrounded by a large amount of vegetation. For this monument, we use a different approach. After testing and validating the efficiency of the Nova Concrete Developed products, we decided to operate a complete restoration of the angel. We operated as a, we were in a calm restoration work site using the current intervention methodologies, but with the new product and the traditional ones together, such as they were already commercially available. Also for this uh, monument, we report the results of the characterization analysis and we note a completely different type of, of a binder that is composed by cement and air lime, but the aggregate is the same and uh, also the characteristic of the porosity. The critical aspects were uh, for this environment were micro and macro fissures and con with, in some cases, loses of cementitious materials oxidization of reinforcing iron and the results of bad maintenance due to the previous restoration interventions. Indeed, the application of a layer of paint not compatible with the substrate and to each other caused over the time a not perfect perspiration process, meaning a correct exchange internal and external and consequently an acceleration of degradation phenomena. You can see in the slide the difference the layer of paint applied on the state one. The restoration of Angel Monument can be considered as the first real intervention in which all the products developed inside the project were used. All the operations are those usually followed during a restoration of a cultural good that have the problem and critical issues before mentioned. The only one difference is the contemporary use of traditional products and the new IC products that are up today still unaltered. Following, you can see some slides showing the different phases of our work. Some photos clearly show the aspect of the material before and after the interventions. We proceeded by removing the non-original paint layers by chemical, mechanical, and laser cleaning, mapping of all degraded area, treating the reinforcement irons with corrosion inhibitor by CNR, treating the cracks by using injections of a yucca tea product, rehydrating all the touched fragments, filling of cracks, gaps, and reconstruction of missing part with GSG high and yet mortars, 
Apply new CAT consolidating agent on the state when two lictor beams. Apply two consolidating agent on the perimeter preset base of the state wheel and two lictor beams. Applying a new finishing varnish on the surface. The cleaning was executed by using mechanical tools, by laser systems, and materials developed by CSGI. In this way, we compare to each other the different systems at disposal to evaluate the efficacy and the facility of application and workability. Here, you can see the injections with corrosion inhibitors developed by CNR, and then the injections with the UKT consolidant. In this slide, you can see well the intervention on the same area. It showed a very strong degradation with the visible and oxidizer reinforcing irons, detachment, and macro fissurations. Treatments for the iron, preliminary consolidation with UKT product, readhesion of the flakes, and integration by using various mortar of CSGI were made. In this slide, the application of YAP mortars are reported. They were used to fill big areas and fissures. To have better feedback on the mortars, we decided to apply them on different contexts and to reconstruct lacking parts. In this way, we could evaluate their workability and the resistance in the time. The chromatic compatibility was not taken into consideration because the stateway would be painted. In the following slides, you can see the progress of the work, the cleaning, the treatment, and after one month of the treatment. And this is the final result and finished work. Thank you for, any, for your attention. And for any question, you can contact Isabella Perige at the mail reported. Thank you. Many thanks, Sabrina. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Welcome. I don't know if someone has any question. Uh, I remind you that for question, you can uh, write in the chat to everyone and everyone can reply but if you write in the chat we will read your question and we will ask the speaker to answer in the meantime you are thinking about any question we would like to test you so we have prepared a very short and i don't know if easy question to you so stefania will explain you better how to answer this question Yes, correct. Thank you very much, Sarah. So, uh, with Isabella, we prepared this question concerning the presentation you have uh, heard. Uh, the question is, what is meant by data collection? Uh, in order to answer, you have to click the link I shared in the chat, then you will be redirected directly to this slide, and then you can insert your answer. This is a multiple choice question, and the possible answers are a historical archive study and diagnostic documentation where possible aimed at deepen the object knowledge. The collection and transmission of data related to the location, street, house number, city, the search for published articles related to the object of the intervention. So take some time, uh, you can think about it. I will uh, start the countdown, but I already see that um, you are inserting your answers. Sabrina, I don't know if you want to comment this one. Uh, the... <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, as you know, and has already explained uh, concerning the Torricella Pelinia monuments, uh, there have been uh, a study on the monuments that have been finally chosen. So, of course, uh, there, ha there was a study in order to propose this one. So, and I confirm that uh, uh, the one that has been chosen for the answer is the correct one. So congratulations, <laughs> this is the correct one. So a historical archive study and diagnostic documentation where possible aimed at deepen the object knowledge. So this is the correct one, congratulations. And uh, I don't know if there are questions in the chat for Sabrina and the presentation concerning um, 
No. C'è la pelina. Not at the moment. Okay. 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 So, if you don't have uh, any additional question, we can uh, go on and uh, I, I present you the next speaker of today. Our next speaker is graduated in electronic engineering at the University of Florence, where he obtained a PhD um, uh, in electronics devices and circuits in 2004. Uh, then he was a contract researcher at the Institute of Applied Physics of the CNR until uh, December 2009. And in 2008, he founded the eLab Scientific, that was a spin off company of the National Research Council of Italy, uh, of which we, he was vice president until 2013. Since uh, December 2009, he has been a researcher at the Institute for the Conservation and Enhancement of Cultural Heritage of the CNR. And uh, he has been a member of national and international working groups for the preparation of standardized protocols for the definition of methods and procedures in the field of conservation of cultural heritage. So it's my pleasure today to introduce you to Cristiano Riminesi. Many thanks for being here. Thank you, Sara. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. And uh, we can see can your you presentation that is about monitoring strategy for the assessment of the product developed in the Innova Concrete project. So the stage is yours when you're ready. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. In this uh, presentation, we speak uh, about uh, the uh, strategy, the correct strategy for uh, uh, understand the efficiency and durability of uh, some products that uh, we applied on, uh, on monuments, uh, in particular in uh, the World Memorial Tower of uh, Torricella Pelinia. We start uh, with uh, uh, the principal basis uh, for the announcement and monitoring of uh, the product's performance and uh, uh, the core chase of the uh, parameters uh, for uh, monitoring directly correlated with the alteration decay process and the choice of the correct uh, device to monitoring uh, the the workflow uh, for, for this uh, strategy, uh, for, for, for a better approach in this uh, tool, uh, start to uh, identify, identify the monument uh, uh, site and to understand by diagnostics the uh, state of conservation of these uh, monuments and uh, identify uh, the uh, exact uh, issue uh, for uh, the conservation. Then uh, we can uh, choose the correct parameters to uh, monitor in order uh, to uh, understand the real risk of uh, conservation of, uh, of, of this monument. When uh, we uh, identify the uh, critical, the, 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 the problems of conservation, we can select some uh, pilot area to test uh, our uh, products uh, before uh, to apply uh, uh, an integrated uh, conservation restoration uh, work. So before we must clean the surface of the selected area, and then we can apply the uh, product. In order to understand the efficacy, efficacy and the durability of the product, we need to uh, monitor in time some parameters directly uh, related uh, with uh, the uh, applied product, for example, for uh, protective products, a, a good choice is the water absorption or uh, the uh, change of color. So, in the, uh, we uh, resume this uh, concept uh, after the uh, choice of the experimental test area, 
we must uh, design a protocol for cleaning and the product uh, application, and we must uh, define the correct procedure for the validation and uh, the, of the uh, developed product uh, in order to understand their efficacy on the, on the monument. Uh, in order to make that, uh, we must establish the, the diagnostic protocol and the choice, correct choice of uh, uh, the parameter, parameter that must uh, uh, monitor it and uh, the uh, correct choice of the uh, method for uh, method and instrument for this, uh, this monitoring. The diagnostic data uh, derived uh, from the on-site validation of these uh, products could be different and uh, could be have a, an high uh, variability uh, respect to uh, the uh, laboratory uh, test. Uh, these are due uh, to several uh, factors, different composition, different uh, aging, uh, different uh, exposure to uh, physical uh, variable, uh, environmental uh, uh, ambient variable, thematic and seasonal variable. We, we don't able to reproduce uh, exactly in laboratory this uh, condition of uh, aging. For this reason, uh, it is fundamental uh, to uh, have uh, always a reference area, no created area, to compare the behavior of the uh, area created with uh, different products with uh, a, a non created uh, condition in order to check the improve or no of uh, due to the application of this uh, product. So uh, the, the task of uh, different uh, case studies in the process, process uh, was uh, to uh, understand uh, the uh, behavior of the uh, result uh, of uh, products uh, for, for, from our uh, research in different condition and uh, very mental condition and uh, we have also other um, issue uh, that we consider in the in this evaluation the application is uh, uh, made by different uh, operators from different site different case study uh, we have uh, uh, different concrete composition and the different exposure uh, to uh, environmental and climate condition. And uh, uh, the, uh, but the, 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 the protocol for monitoring must be uh, the same in order to uh, compare uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the right way the different results obtained in different case studies. Other, uh, another thing is uh, the, the, the measurement the, uh, must be uh, done by the same operator uh, in order to avoid uh, different um, uh, handled uh, uh, by operator. Um, in this slide, we confirm the necessity to have, have always uh, entreated uh, area to compare the results with the treated area. This entreated area, with uh, it has uh, uh, the same similar uh, concrete composition, similar uh, exposure. And uh, we must uh, apply the, the same uh, measurement that in the, uh, in the created area. The uh, parameters for uh, uh, necessary to uh, understand exactly the, the, the behavior of uh, our products are that, uh, are these. 
uh, we must uh, control the color of changing the the hardness of the the, the substrate the uh, surface compactness uh, and surface uh, superficial cohesion of the of the material the characteristics of water absorption of this uh, surface the change in morpho morphological aspect we need to understand the uh, rebar corrosion in uh, the trend of rebar corrosion uh, and the, the product stability and the byproducts uh, due to uh, our uh, applied products. There are several, uh, this is, these are all the, the techniques that uh, can be uh, applied for control of this parameter, in this in, in red. In the war uh, tower memorial, we applied uh, almost all of that and uh, we uh, will go to uh, understand how we can apply in a correct way this uh, measurement device and how we can uh, what kind of information we can uh, have from uh, this this is the case study of Montmorillon War Memorial Tower, well described by uh, my colleague uh, Sabina, about the uh, cleaning uh, product application. He uh, she uh, explained very well, and just the summary of the applied uh, products uh, divided by uh, category: uh, protective, consolidant, consolidant, Q corrosion inhibitor. And mortar uh, repair. So the parameter for uh, understand uh, the uh, efficacy and the durability of uh, this product are color, hardness, compactness, water absorption, and morphology, morphological aspect. By the control of uh, these uh, parameters, we can. Uh, understand the behavior of uh, uh, our products in several in several uh, case studies with uh, different uh, concrete composition and different uh, environmental uh, exposure. For repair motors, it will be considered only color compactness and morphological aspects. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, summary uh, for uh, uh, the uh, evaluation of the performance uh, uh, memorial tower for our products and uh, the uh, test uh, that we uh, applied in this uh, case study. Just uh, a, a review of uh, uh, the 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 decay uh, process, decay uh, phenomena present inside the uh, tower and uh, the uh, cleaning and the procedure and the, 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 the type of application of products applied on this uh, area. For uh, this kind of uh, uh, investigation we need to have portable uh, measurement uh, so uh, respect to uh, several years ago the trend is changed uh, is changed uh, before uh, the, the the normal practice uh, was to uh, take a sample and uh, make the, uh, the the analysis in the in the laboratory now the laboratory uh, thanks to uh, development of uh, ICT uh, technology uh, the laboratory go to the um, monument uh, go to the uh, the case study in order to understand the state of conservation uh, in order to evaluate the performance of uh, conservation uh, works. 
the first step is uh, the characterization of the problem for conservation and uh, assess the risk of conservation by a correct monitoring procedures. And uh, these uh, are the output of these uh, uh, works uh, are uh, uh, useful to define a correct intervention and uh, a, define a, a schedule and maintenance for uh, preventive conservation. In our case, we uh, use, uh, we control the biological activity on the surface by a biolanometer, the water absorption uh, uh, by a contact, contact sponge test and by uh, SUSE uh, devices repeated in the, in the past uh, line. The surface cohesion uh, has been uh, checked by peeling test and the surface hardness by the rebound test and the ultrasonic pulse uh, velocity measurement system. The equation profile could be uh, checked by a drilling system, but in this case we use uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity in order to don't uh, don't uh, perform any um, damage on the on the surface. The uh, control of the pattern of the surface can be uh, checked by ultra close range of photogrammetry and the bar corrosion corrosion by electrochemical measurement, the surface color and high color meter, and the temperature and the humidity controlled by air thermography and uh, by SUSE system that we uh, see in the, in the procedures of uh, presentation by uh, to check the humidity and the salt uh, presence in the bulk of the of the material. The biological activity can be uh, checked by uh, the uh, measurement of adenosine three phosphate. It is a molecular uh, that we can uh, found in all uh, living cell, and uh, by the uh, combination we uh, Lupiris enzyme, uh, we can uh, check the uh, amount of light by this uh, instrumentation uh, bioluminometer. So by a, a, a clean um, trace uh, system, we can check the, 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 the surface, uh, the sponge, and uh, we make uh, the, the reaction and, uh, by, with the lucifer and uh, check the measurement of light with the uh, biolumeter. For the control of the changing of uh, color on the surface, we can use this portable, portable device, the, this is the color meter, we can apply it in contact with the surface and take the uh, reflected light uh, from the surface by uh, a, a, a standard uh, light. So we can uh, um, describe the, 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 this uh, uh, light reflected by the surface in these three space, uh, particular three space uh, that uh, called CLAB system. And uh, um, we can uh, monitor the change of color during time, uh, step by step. This is uh, an example to check the uh, variation of color uh, the uh, parameter uh, delta E is uh, a, a resum uh, parameter for understanding the global uh, behavior of the uh, single variable LEB and uh, the limit uh, for a human naked A is uh, about uh, three. So difference less than this value uh, we don't uh, able to uh, appreciate uh, by our uh, E. In order to control uh, the surface cohesion, uh, we use uh, the peeling test. 
uh, it is uh, composed by a, a simple, quite simple adhesive tape that uh, can uh, apply on uh, the surface uh, in order to perform a uniform pressure and, and so obtain a uniform adhesion. We uh, can use this uh, simple uh, tool and uh, uh, by the measurement uh, of the tape before and after uh, the, the, the performance of this uh, adhesion, we can understand wow, what, what, what is the, 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 the entity of the material uh, detached by this, uh, this tape. And so, the cohesion of the of the of the surface. Several kind of uh, tape uh, can be used in order to un understand the 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 the, the, the particular uh, grade of cohesion of the the substrate. Uh, we must uh, understand before and choice before the uh, tape uh, that we uh, want to use. And in this case, uh, we uh, obviously uh, selected the same tape for all case study in order to have a, a possible uh, comparison between uh, every, every case study. Another uh, device for uh, understand the hardness of the um, material, the concrete, and the uh, cohesion, also the cohesion of the, uh, the substrate, is the ultrasonic pulse velocity. In this case, uh, this device, we involve uh, the, the, the propagation of the uh, ultrasonic wave in, in the material. The uh, ultrasonic wave can propagate uh, in the material if uh, uh, are not present a uh, gap of air. In this case, uh, the uh, ultrasonic uh, wave it is, uh, it, it is uh, stopped by the presence of uh, air. And so it is uh, very useful to uh, understand and check the uh, efficacy of uh, uh, mortar repair uh, in, uh, in the crack. For this instance, this is uh, the uh, device used in, uh, at the War Memorial Tower and uh, is complying, uh, this device is complying with this uh, standard. And uh, we uh, measure uh, the, the velocity of uh, the ultrasonic wave in the material when we have a, a high velocity, uh, the uh, disease uh, indicates uh, the uh, good quality of, uh, of the material, while slower being velocity uh, demonstrates the, 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 the presence of cracks or uh, voids in the material. In this case, uh, the uh, range of uh, frequency of our uh, ultrasonic wave uh, are from uh, 40 kilohertz to uh, 54 uh, kilohertz. Another uh, standard used to understand the um, hardness of the material is uh, the rebound test by uh, the Smith Hammer and uh, also this uh, uh, device is uh, um, is, is uh, uh, comply with the with the with the standard and uh, we can uh, measure uh, the uh, the impact the energy of the uh, of the impact of this uh, this armor on the, on the, on the on the surface of uh, of the concrete, then uh, we in, uh, with the, uh, by the this curve of calibration, we can uh, uh, traduce the rebound value 
with uh, the uh, strength of the of the of the material this uh, this device uh, uh, was uh, uh, applied to understand the efficacy of consolidant uh, material in order to understand the uh, efficacy of uh, protective products so we uh, can use the contact sponge uh, test this is uh, uh, composed by a, a particular sponge and a, a can be uh, perform the measurement of uh, this sponge uh, pre uh, charged by a, a predefined uh, quantity of water then we can apply uh, the uh, sponge uh, on the on the surface on, on the test the uh, quantity of uh, water inside the sponge has been transferred uh, in, into the substrate so uh, the difference in weight uh, between the uh, the the, the, the the, the application on the on the surface uh, uh, per allow uh, to us to understand one uh, how much the the, the surface uh, uh, has uh, um, absorb uh, absorbed the uh, the water in the case of a perfect uh, protective uh, products uh, the same uh, weight could be uh, found uh, first and after the, uh, the application in order to uh, understand um, if uh, uh, the, the, the surface after the um, application of product maintain or no the uh, transpirability uh, we can use uh, the ERM, uh, IR thermography uh, system. In this case, uh, by this instrument, we can perform the measurement of the uh, surface of the temperature. And uh, it is not possible to see through object. We are able uh, to uh, measure with uh, accuracy and uh, Available uh, way the, the the temperature of the surface, and uh, we uh, can use uh, several kind of device. Uh, some example, and we have we have uh, we have we can have a, a camera with high performance or or no. In our case, uh, we use uh, used this kind of. Uh, thermo camera and we perform the uh, measurement of uh, uh, temperature uh, after the application the uh, spongy uh, test in order to uh, monitor the um, evaporation of water uh, from uh, the surface uh, when uh, the uh, water uh, applied by the spongy uh, is uh, remains on, on the surface, the uh, evaporation is uh, more quickly than when the water uh, penetrates in in the in the substrate. So by this um, compare the uh, area uh, created with the area uh, untreated we can understand the uh, efficacy uh, for the transpirability of the uh, of the applied products in order uh, to understand the behavior in in depth we need to uh, perform a subsurface investigation uh, this uh, uh, kind of investigation is uh, possible by this uh, device uh, and we can uh, um, 
perform the measurement uh, until two, uh, two centimeters in depth in the substrate, the ratio of this measurement uh, to detect the uh, dielectric or uh, constant, a particular property of the material uh, of the water inside of the uh, host uh, medium, in this case uh, concrete, uh, that have a, a, a very uh, less uh, value of uh, the electric constant. 2,5 uh, versus uh, 80 in the case of uh, water. So by this measurement, we can uh, perform the uh, measurement also of the uh, salinity uh, the present uh, the presence of salt in the in the in the material by the measurement of uh, conductivity uh, inside of the material by uh, this particular microwave uh, approach the response is in real time uh, the device is completely uh, portable and the measurement is very repro 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 reproducible the only dis disadvantage is uh, that we need a, a calibration procedure. So uh, before I start our investigation, we must uh, to take some sample and to perform the uh, measurement at the dry state and uh, water locked condition. Just to understand the sensitivity uh, of the instrument to uh, the uh, conducibility due to the presence of souls, this measurement of uh, souls is uh, quite independent from the uh, moisture content uh, for uh, up to uh, over 3% uh, uh, of moisture content the line is quite uh, uh, horizontal to uh, demonstrate the um, not sensitivity to uh, humidity, but only to uh, source value. The, the, um, the measurement uh, um, on the same point of uh, spongy test also uh, uh, was were monitored by this device in the same point of the uh, thermography uh, captured by thermography in order to uh, compare the uh, behavior of uh, the surface obtained by thermography uh, we want to understand the behavior uh, on the, of the of the bulk uh, how uh, what is uh, what was the amount of water inside uh, of the of the of the material inside the concrete uh, due to the application of uh, spongy uh, charged by uh, so we can compare directly the uh, measurement of Susie. Uh, device with uh, the results of uh, spongy uh, test in, uh, in order to uh, understand uh, the uh, behavior directly uh, created area uh, with untreated uh. At last, the bar corrosion electrochemical measurement uh, just uh, a flash because uh, our uh, uh, colleagues uh, explain better than me uh, the behavior of this uh, device and uh, it is uh, uh, useful and necessary to understand the process of uh, corrosion of the uh, of the bar inside the grid and last uh, in order to uh, monitor and check the uh, performance of the mortar, we used uh, the uh, ultra cross range photogrammetry. This system is based on the classical photogrammetry and uh, allows uh, a, a 
a generation of a 3D uh, surface uh, partner uh, of, of the area uh, understand. It's composed by a motorized uh, bar and a common uh, digital reference camera. It works by uh, three uh, princi uh, principal uh, steps in major acquisition, uh, point cloud and surface uh, generation in order to uh, obtain a, a 3D uh, model uh, or, or uh, digital elevation model. Uh, by these uh, procedures, we can obtain a 3D model perfectly uh, measurable. And so we can extract a profile and uh, we can understand uh, the behavior of the uh, repair mortar in, in, uh, during time. Just an example, uh, what uh, obtain, on, for example, on these uh, cracks, uh, covered by, uh, filled by, uh, I don't remember how uh, products prepare mortar, but this is uh, the curve, uh, the profile before the application of mortar, and then uh, after the application of mortar. It's typical for restorer apply the, um, the mortar in, in to maintain the, 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 the profile uh, a little uh, over uh, oh, the, 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 the surface profile. But we don't have any change during time, more than one year uh, um, after the application of this uh, kind of mortar. The same concept in several uh, points can extract by the model several uh, profile. And uh, so I finish my presentation. Thank you for uh, your uh, attention. Thanks, Cristiano. Thank you very much for your presentation. Really interesting. So I ask to the people uh, that uh, are participating if someone has any question to, for Cristiano to ask of, or if uh, everything is uh, clear, please, uh, you can have the chat, you can write in the chat your question and I will uh, go in to read it. Don't be shy. Yeah. You will not be judged for your question. You will be judged only next week when we will send you our questionnaire. Thank you. We wait just a couple of seconds to see if uh, anyone uh, wants to write something. But at the moment, there are no questions. Okay, so maybe we can go on and if you have any question to Cristiano, you can uh, write uh, in the chat also by a couple of minutes or uh, whenever you, you desire. So, our next presentation will be about uh, the activity done, uh, the product application and the performance monitoring on the Kaunas 9th Fourth in uh, Lithuania and uh, in the Warsaw railway station in uh, uh, Warsaw, in Poland. But before giving the, um, the, the stage to our next speaker, that will be David Lopez, we would like to test your knowledge and uh, Stefania will share yeah. another interesting question. Yeah, thank you very much, Sara. Mm -hmm. So this question has been prepared together with David. Uh, you can uh, um, click on the link that I just sent uh, in the chat, the Mentimeter link, uh, and uh, you will be redirected to the question that is, which phases should, be, sh should you validate before testing products on real monuments? 
So the possible answers are none. Theoretical validation, theoretical validation and laboratory validation, theoretical validation, laboratory validation, mock-up tests validation. So uh, let's see which uh, is your answer here and then David will explain us which is the correct one and why. So let's see, um, please insert your answers. I will start the countdown. I am posted in one minute. So let's see which, uh, which are your answers here. Please don't be shy, just uh, uh, try to answer and see which is the correct answer <laughs> which David will explain us so risk even if you don't know the answer please risk exactly <laughs> and try to answer it just think about it though. also based on the work you are performing or the study you are doing so let's see which uh, is uh, the correct answer for you so that we can see and we can maybe uh, answer your doubts uh, on this question uh, related to the presentation that will follow, that uh, David will explain us. So 50 seconds to go, and then David will explain us uh, which is the current one and why. So David, be prepared <laughs> for our students <laughs> to answer. Three, two, two one. one. Okay, and stop. The voting is closed. So, David, what can you say us about it? Is it the correct question, uh, answer? Yes. Uh, well, most of them uh, got the correct answer, yes. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So, our next speaker, as you can see here from the webcam, is David Lopez by Ines Ingenieros. David is a civil engineer with over 10 years of experience in assessment and rehabilitation of concrete, steel, and mensary existing structures. He represents Hines Ingenieros, that is one of Innova Concrete Partners. Uh, Hines is a consultancy company specializing in design of new structures and rehabilitation of existing ones. Among his experience related uh, with cultural heritage, uh, besides working in Innova Concrete, uh, David uh, um, participated in the assessment and recommendation for the Spanish House in Culture in Haiti and uh, just after the earthquake in uh, 2010. Moreover, uh, he participated in the rehabilitation of hate building groups in the urban citadel in Iraq and uh, in the rehabilitation of Fort George uh, uh, 18th century fortification in the Caribbean country of Grenada. Currently, he is working in the rehabilitation of Yankum Fortress among the Silk Road and in the rehabilitation of Citadel Henry. So many thanks for being here, David. The stage is yours. Thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. I'm going to share once again my screen and uh, just let you know to all the people that are attending that uh, when well, I left you uh, a couple of links in in the chat okay. uh, with yes. a couple of quits just in case uh, you're interested in in doing some extra questions and I also left you my my email contact uh, well, just in case you have any doubts uh, after the presentation that you want to ask me well as uh, Sarah has uh, mentioned I'm going to speak a bit about uh, the products in situ validation in two case studies of the Innova Concrete project in which uh, we have been working on. Just to uh, show you a bit the scheme of the presentation that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to do a brief introduction where I'm going to well, explain a bit uh, which are, which is the, the, the overall uh, process for validating a, a product. I'm going to, I'm going to speak also about uh, some preliminary steps that are required before uh, applying and, and doing the monitoring of uh, products in, in case studies. And finally, I will go through the products in situ validation that besides what uh, what uh, Cristiano has mentioned uh, regarding the performance monitoring with different devices, uh, well, I think it's also important to highlight that there are other aspects that are important to consider when, when we are validating a, a product no? and uh, you will be seeing. So, just uh, as introduction, which is the um, 
which is the process or uh, in all the different steps that we need to follow in order to validate the product uh, which main purpose is to commercialize it at the end no? uh, well here we have a kind of a easy example no or easy correlation uh, now we have all in mind uh, for example the covid vaccine no uh, and this is a bit more or less the same no here we have uh, a first step that uh, requires some um, analytical uh, studies in which uh, we use um, well we know but uh, i mean the group other partners of the group are in charge of of uh, well just checking that the physical and chemical uh, properties of uh, the products and uh, uh, of the concrete are are actually uh, feasible when the, the things that uh, the product developers are saying are actually feasible uh, by checking certain parameters that are able to be undertaken in in this type of physical and, and chemical analysis once we have that validated we pass uh, to validate this in in the laboratory that would be equivalent to to the mice no that is when we we have a vaccine they test it in mice and mice here we have uh, products that we test uh, instead of mice we use uh, different uh, concrete that we built and uh, in, in small uh, tubes no? and uh, we also use mock-up samples what are mock-up samples well they are uh, tailored uh, concrete uh, samples that we we, we reproduce the, the concrete uh, of the different monuments that we're going to be testing and we we make it in in a specific uh, small uh, sample in order to be tested in laboratory what's the laboratory uh, the laboratory at the end it allows you uh, to test uh, and then the products under uh, fixed uh, boundary conditions uh, you have the same temperature same humidity and so on and so forth no and once you have this validated you go to real cases before going to a monument and testing a product you should be uh, doing uh, some additional tests on, on other real cases that have no cultural heritage, no? but well, I'm going to go just directly into the real cases. That uh, real case without cultural uh, value would be equivalent to testing it on, on monkeys, no? but uh, now we're going directly to uh, testing it in, in human beings. No? So what do we need? We need volunteers, no? as uh, happened with the, with the COVID vaccine. And once we have uh, brave people that uh, volunteer for for testing the, the vaccine, we can uh, start commercializing and uh, doing other parts of the process that uh, are required in order to get them to the to the rest of the population. Well, here I present you uh, our two volunteers in our, in our case, which are um, a Warsaw uh, Station Pavilion uh, that uh, was built uh, after the Second World War uh, during the reconstruction of the Warsaw city. And well, uh, the main the main interest of the of this uh, structure is that it's a it's its shape uh, li linked to the to its history, and uh, well, it, it formed part of uh, a reconstruction of the uh, the cross city railway line, and uh, it was built together with other four structures that uh, each one had a different uh, a different um, shape. And uh, well, they are they are using mathematical equations in order to to uh, give the shapes to the to the to the deck of the of the structure, no? And it is it's quite particular, having in mind the the architecture of the Soviet Union at that at that time of uh, of the history, and uh, well, that's uh, the main the main things that we want to highlight regarding this structure. There you could see a bit more the, the top part of this. Uh, uh, structure, which is one of the important things, uh, and the other volunteer that we have is the Ninth Fort Monument. No, this one was built a bit a bit after than the than the one in Warsaw, and this one is built was built in in Kaunas in Lithuania, and uh, well, you will see now in this video, uh, well, the significance it has. No, it's uh, besides being huge, as you can see here with the scale with uh, <laughs> with us working on it and uh, well you can obviously see that uh, the the shapes and everything is, is a clear example of a soviet uh, uh, sculpture 
And besides that, well, it has uh, it implied a multidisciplinary design team as well as a complex uh, construction techniques. So uh, regarding uh, preliminary steps that we were talking about, no? before applying the products and testing on real monuments, we need also to do certain certain things no? once we have passed the laboratory stage. Uh, what, do we, what do we do? Well, we have a characterization stage, we have a selection of validation areas, and we have the validation areas preparation. Okay, which is which? What do we do in each of them? Okay, in the characterization stage, what uh, we do is uh, get a bit the feedback of the, the clinic history of our patient. No? Uh, in this case, uh, well, we do an historical study in order to, to know which are the concrete properties, uh, which is the structural configuration, and we try to recover as much information as possible in order to get to know the, the concrete uh, uh, chemical and, and mechanical properties. No? Uh, besides this, uh, we need to conduct a geometrical definition in order to understand how this, uh, uh, well, how these monuments are, which are the different elements that they have, and how do they behave. No? For that purpose, we, we flew some drones, and with the drones, we developed a 3D model that you can see now, I hope, in, in the videos. And uh, what did we use this for? Well, we did it, we used it for conducting uh, damage mapping, locating the damages uh, within, the, within the monuments. Also to, to uh, conduct, uh, um, how do you say it? Uh, well, a climate study in order to know how the, how the sun uh, shines in the different parts of the day in the different areas. And, uh, uh, sorry. And, uh, and also well, to know the wind. Sorry, uh, I don't know if you, come on. I think this uh, collapsed. Well, here you have the, the same for the, for the other example. And uh, well, this helped us, uh, uh, to locate also the, the non-destructive and the destructive test uh, campaign and to select the locations where to, where to do the different uh, characterization and as well afterwards to, to, to apply the, where to apply the, the products, no? to select the areas that you will see next. Well, as conclusion of this uh, preliminary steps, uh, we could say that in both cases, we got an environment with high precipitation uh, that is subject to twice uh, cycles uh, with a high risk uh, almost all the year. Uh, this means that uh, the temperature goes over over zero and below zero, and then uh, we have problems of uh, well, we 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 can be, have ice and uh, water, what changes the the size within the pores, and that can crack. And uh, well, in the case of Varsa, we have acid rain. No, so well. In both cases, uh, what we uh, do is uh, as assign uh, an environment according to to Eurocode standards to an exposure class. That exposure class, according to the Eurocode, uh, tells us also uh, one, an idea of uh, which should be the the range uh, within the different uh, properties, mechanical and chemical properties of the concrete, in which we should be. Uh, having the the concrete in order to make sure that we can withstand the, that environment, no? and then here we have an example. No? In the case of um, in the case of Varsa, we see that we have a, a bit lower uh, quality concrete in terms of compressive strength, and uh, we have we detected also carbonation. Okay, it's important to also analyze uh, on on the laboratory certain uh, chemical composition of the concrete in order to get to know which is the which are the decay processes that are, can be active and affecting the concrete the carbonation is a process that uh, at the end what does is uh, cor what corrodes the rebars in the case of kaunas no no active decay process was detected and uh, well this gives us an idea of what uh, each of the case studies can be used for in terms of uh, validating the products no Okay, so next step would uh, once we have characterized the the concrete 
and uh, the problems that we have, then we are able to select the validation areas that we're going to be using. No? The first step uh, that we need to do is well, understand properly the product. No? In this case, uh, we have uh, consolidants that improve the concrete uh, hardness of the top part of the surface, super hydrophobic products that uh, are water repellent, corrosion inhibitors, and crack sealants. And we had a uh, a plasma device, which is, uh, well, as Sabrina was explaining at the beginning of this morning, a device that helps applying products. We couldn't use this one in the, in, in our case studies, but we, we mainly tested a, a representative uh, portion of each of the, of the products listed here. Each of the products has different variations because they have to be tailored to the concrete properties. For example, there are certain consolidants that are oriented to uh, one type of, ag of aggregate or another type of aggregate. So it's important to make sure that we understand what are the products for and uh, uh, to which type of concrete we are addressing them. No? And uh, once we have that, we, we need to match the problems that we have in the monuments with the products that, uh, that we have got. No? And then uh, that together with the environment, uh, we get to uh, a final, uh, possible match of uh, products and locations. Additionally, in order to make sure that, uh, that uh, in this case, that uh, we have uh, the things more easy for, for the validation, uh, one important thing was uh, try to avoid the need of uh, auxiliary means. So we were choosing locations that were at the bottom of the structure. Uh, also important is to keep them away from the eyes of uh, of the tourists as much as possible. Uh, don't choose the, the location uh, that is more outside for doing tests, no? even if you have already tested in the laboratory. Finally, we have uh, certain uh, certain constraints uh, that are uh, uh, well conditioned by the by the devices that uh, we use for doing the monitoring as. Uh, as Cristiano was mentioning just before, no? right? there are certain devices that require for doing different tests, you need to uh, certain measurements. So we that also conditioned the selection of the validation areas. Here you have an example on the in the Kaunas case of uh, the different uh, selected areas. No? Just mentioned that uh, when we select uh, different areas, we, we don't select one area for each product. What, what we do is try to select several areas uh, for the same products. Uh, by this, uh, we want to study not only uh, the, the products, but how they behave uh, against the different uh, exposure conditions, no? because you might have more sun in one side, more, more rain or more uh, wind impact and so on and so forth. And, and, the, and in the same time, at the same time, yeah, you have uh, always the chance that uh, one of the one of the applications is not properly undertaken or whatever. And then it's, it's also interesting to have a spare, a spare testing areas. Uh, before the application, we need to conduct some uh, preparation of the, of the surface or some preparation uh, regarding uh, certain, certain measurements that, we, that need to be undertaken. And one of the things that we do is uh, analyze the concrete conditions. We, it's important to know which is the temperature and, and, and moisture of the, of the concrete surface before applying the products. In some cases, we, in the case of uh, cracks, it's important to have a continuous monitoring previous to the application of the products. That in our case in Barça, we did it with a wire liner uh, potential, potential metric uh, transducers that was uh, installed by Rina, and uh, well, it's uh, it's just to know how the 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 product behaves in the future. But uh, uh, having the knowledge of uh, the history of the of the crack, no. And uh, finally, we have uh, an example of uh, what that we need to clean, no, uh, the certain surfaces in certain occasions. We'll remove uh, biofilms, like in this case that you see in the video, and we also need to remove, for example, coatings, uh, mainly for applying products such as that all those that require impregnation, which are mainly consolidants, super products, and, uh, and the corrosion inhibitor products. Uh, why is this? Because, uh, well, uh, if uh, you have a biofilm or coating, they are, in a way covering the pores and then, uh, well, if the pores are covered, the, the product cannot go through uh, through the surface and act protecting the concrete. 
now would be the time for seeing the preliminary quiz, uh, preliminary steps quiz, but I believe that I'm a bit back on time, so I will continue. And if you have any, uh, well, any doubts about it, uh, you, you contact me. Okay, so now I go directly to the products in situ validation that, as I was saying, it has uh, two main steps, which are the product application and afterwards the performance monitoring. I know that already Christiana talked about the performance monitoring, explaining all the devices and also Sabrina, uh, well, uh, she explained also parts of the techniques that are used for the application and I'm going to uh, talk about more uh, simple things, uh, more related with, uh, with the contractors no? and uh, with the commercialization of the products and uh, what can be a challenge in the case that uh, things are not uh, easy. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. So uh, I'm going to go directly uh, with some examples of products, okay, that uh, we validated, or that at least we applied and uh, we are we have monitored. Here you have an example with um, with uh, crack sealant that uh, was developed uh, together with uh, between sorry um, the Instituto de Roja and and Sica. And uh, well, in terms of application, what what do we look at? No, uh, in this case, it's a it's a crack sealant that was oriented to to seal cracks over two millimeters and under five millimeters. We uh, had to transport this from Spain to to Warsaw and Lithuania, and then for us, it's important also to have uh, if it's a good it has a good packaging, is if, if it's easy to transport, and this type of things. No, so we can conclude that it's uh, well has a good packaging, easy transport, uh, easy preparation, good workability. That means that once you prepare it, it stays, uh, the possibility of applying it stays uh, during a long time. It has a kind of a liquid texture and it's easy to apply. We apply it with a syringe and, uh, and a trowel. No? And uh, it has a normal consumption because it's just uh, applying it and filling the the crack. No, And it was applied in, in this, con in this ambient and and concrete surface conditions, which is well also something that is important to measure, in order to make sure that uh, once you validate, you can make a, you can make a technical sheet of the product uh, indicating in which conditions uh, it works. Related with the performance monitoring, well, just mentioned that uh, here we we check mainly color, shrinkage, and with variation with this, uh, with the device of continuous monitoring that I mentioned before, installed by RENA and uh, the crack depth uh, using ultra positive velocity and water absorption. Well, as you can see here uh, in related, I'm showing only the crack depth and the water absorption. Uh, here we have uh, a clear decrease on the on the crack depth, and uh, well, they, we we see that uh, after four months and after nine months, it's almost zero. No, the measurement that we we take. It's also important to have in mind that um, when you when you analyze uh, certain uh, the performance of the of the products, you need to define which parameters you are going to be me measuring, no? as, as uh, Cristiano was mentioning. But it's also important to have in mind that uh, that uh, which is the range of variation that you're going to be having no? when, when you monitor or what are you expecting and make sure that the techniques that you're using are uh, within that range. Uh, in this case, the ultra pulse velocity uh, gives uh, information that uh, can be more or less reliable, but it has also uh, some problems of range. In the case of the water absorption, for example, we had we used the Karsten tube in this case, not the SUSI test that uh, that uh, Cristiano was mentioning. And uh, here at the at T0 plus four months, we had the problem of uh, that we couldn't seal properly the the Karsten tube to the to the concrete, and that is why we we had a problem of uh, water absorption highlighted there. But as you can see, after nine months, it worked beautifully. So we can say that this project this product was was uh, uh, working properly and it didn't present any shrink problems. In here, I present another another product. Uh, in this case, is the corrosion and a corrosion inhibitor product. In regards with the application, well, uh, what uh, what do we want to say that it has a good packaging, was easy to transport, uh, easy preparation, uh, good workability, 
it's a liquid, then it's easy to apply and you apply that with a brush or using a spray and uh, it has a, a nice consumption. It's not high uh, in comparison with uh, other things that are uh, similar in the market. No? And um, well, it was also applied under these uh, conditions, boundary conditions. And here, just mentioned that as uh, uh, Cristiano was mentioning, we measured the corrosion potential and the resistivity. And uh, when measuring the corrosion potential after four months, we got an, uh, an improvement of the of the concrete. But after nine months, we we got again uh, a bad result. No? So now we are checking a bit uh, what can be happening. And for that, we are going uh, to use well certain uh, uh, samples that we obtained, as you can see here in the right hand side, and uh, we're testing it in laboratory to to get some clearance on on the validation of uh, these results. Finally, I want to uh, well just present the case of uh, the super hydrophobic product developed by UCA, the University of Cadiz. And uh, here, uh, well, just regarding the application, we have to say that at the beginning, we had a certain problem with uh, with the packaging because if you didn't uh, close it properly, it could jellyfy, but uh, that was easy, easy to solve. And then uh, they, they solved it from the university and sent us uh, new, new samples of the product that uh, we could transport perfectly we had uh, easy we have we had no problems to prepare it uh, it had a good workability easy to apply which is important and uh, uh, low consumption so it's uh, it's good uh, it's good news because uh, as the ones before well uh, they they have a chance to go to the market no in terms of performance um uh, well, here we we can. It's uh, what I want to highlight in this case is that uh, we've been talking mainly Cristiano about many techniques, no, and devices that can be used for uh, the the validation of the products and measuring different parameters and so on and so forth. And and sometimes the nature gives us uh, other solutions that are much more visible and much more clear. And uh, here I just want to show that, uh, for example, during our our visits to Kaunas, uh, the first two visits after nine months and after 13 months, uh, we had rain and snow. No? And uh, here you can see clearly uh, in this in this product and that uh, that it was working beautifully because because the the places where it was applied they were completely dry and they showed uh, clearly. No, and uh, well, I just want to show. An example uh, of uh, the, the, an additional test, more manual, uh, when uh, there is no rain and uh, the technical devices uh, maybe don't give us so so good results. No, uh, this is after um, eighteen months, as I say, and you can see a very technified technique. Uh, just pouring water over it, and you can see how it works in an amazing way because it keeps the um, the super hydrophobic effect, and uh, actually, it's repealing all the water where the the section in which it was applied. No. Well, uh, here it would be the time to do the the quiz, but I believe that I'm a bit uh, over the time, <laughs> and uh, so if you have any questions, uh, do not hesitate to write to me. And uh, well, thank you for your attention. Many thanks, David. Very nice presentation. Mm -hmm. And we have to say that me and Stefania um, did the, a score of three on three on your uh, on your yeah. questions. So we can we <laughs> we can go good, good. we can work with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. So whenever you want to start, you let me know. Okay. <laughs> Anne Linde from TU Delft uh, uh, writes, thank you, David, for the clear presentation. So many thanks, Anne. Thank you. If someone has any question for David, please uh, write in the chat, of course, uh, as usual. For the moment, uh, we don't have any, any answer, any questions, sorry. Oh, I have a question. How do you quantify good and fair for workability and packaging? 
Yeah, well, this is basically that, um, what do we consider, no? That we, we, we put ourselves on, on the side of a contractor, no? And uh, if you need to imagine that you need to, it's, uh, you can, we can go back again to the, um, to the example of uh, COVID vaccine, no? Uh, if you get Pfizer, uh, you need to transport this uh, 50 degrees below zero, which is not very handful, no? And, uh, and it's not, not handful to transport, not to, uh, to a store in the in the locations where in the medical centers now where they apply the the vaccine so this is a bit the same case no here it's uh, so you understand in this case it was uh, stored or um, collected in in bottles and uh, we used the uh, uh, coca cola bottles uh, of uh, half a liter and uh, we closed them with uh, the cover properly but um, it, once you open it, and if you let, leave it open, uh, sometimes it uh, it can get too jellyfied. No, so the the what we tested basically is uh, that we we had to transport it in a plane. It was going uh, not in cabin, but uh, on the on the bottom of the plane. So it was subject to uh, low temperatures, and didn't nothing happened. Uh, didn't happen anything with uh, sun exposure either. We we tend to uh, to suggest to avoid that, but uh, it it worked okay. No, in terms of workability, what do we talk, call about workability? Uh, workability is the the time that you you can uh, be applying a product once you prepare it. Uh, how long does it last? Uh, the the product prepared without being uh, or how do you say it? In the case of a, of a mortar, for example, the mortar with with after some certain time it uh, it dries out, no, because it's the purpose of the of the mortar, no, the, to to be liquid for the application that it makes it easy to go inside the cracks. But once you apply it, that it uh, it uh, gets dry and uh, it seals the crack, no. So in this case, what what we mean is that we prepare the mortar. And, uh, and we could keep working on it by by um, how do you call it by just remove moving and keep moving the the, the material no and uh, once you leave it uh, without moving it, it stopped obviously uh, this was during a more or less uh, a short period of time I'm not talking about uh, hours but it would allow us to apply during uh, maybe 10 minutes no and that it's a good news. For the contractor because he he doesn't need to prepare a small portions of uh, the of uh, of a product but he can prepare larger uh, larger amounts and uh, I'm thinking about for example in the case of a monument like Kaunas is not like the case of um, the the angel no of uh, Torricella Bellina that uh, you apply things in a small portion if you imagine the scale of uh, of kaunas which is uh, 30 meters tall well you can imagine that uh, you you need a different type of product to be able to repair uh, things over there no? i don't know if i could clarify here yes thanks so Thank many thanks uh, david it was a pleasure having you here today, and uh, we we can continue with our next presentation. But uh, before uh, giving the floor of the to the Centennial Hall, uh, Stefania has a question for everyone. Yes, indeed. As you know, we are going to hear a presentation concerning the Centennial Hall. So we have prepared a question. This is an open one. And it is about the Centennial Hall listed as UNESCO World Heritage Site. So when was the Centennial Hall listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site? As you know, we have this case study that uh, is a UNESCO Heritage Site. Uh, so you can insert your answer here concerning uh, the year or time when uh, this has been listed uh, as UNESCO Heritage Site. So let's see which is the correct answer and uh, we'll then start the presentation so just to let you know that um, don't spy on google please no absolutely <laughs> <laughs> no 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 absolutely not so let's see uh, which are the answers from our audience 
the, the correct one will be presented uh, in the video that the Centennial Hall has prepared and will be shared with you all. So we will just know which is the correct one. But uh, before starting, uh, I see that uh, most of the answers are around the two, uh, 2000s, so 2008, 2007, 2006, 2000, and some are before, so 1986, 1996, and 1998. So I think that uh, we collected the most answers. And okay. uh, you can see uh, in the presentations which is the correct one. I know it, <laughs> but let's see <laughs> which is the correct one. Yes, unfortunately, uh, the guys from the Centania all cannot be with us today, but uh, they send us uh, uh, a video presentation. So I'm going to, to share with you the presentation of the Centennial All in, Bo in Rock Lab in situ application and performance evaluation of uh, Innova Concrete products. So, so many thanks and I hope you enjoy it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mateusz Moczko and I'm from Wrocław, uh, representing together with Mr. Krzysztof Raszczuk, Wrocław University of Science and Technology and uh, Centennial Hall in Innova Concrete European project. Today, I would like to present in situ application and performance evaluation of Innova Concrete products in Centennial Hall in Wrocław. At first, I would like to say just a few words about the Centennial Hall structure, which was constructed in 1912 uh, and it was one of the first decised reinforced concrete dome structures in the world. And in 2006, it was entered into the UNESCO World Heritage List. As a structure, it faced uh, some problems among the years, but taking to account the, uh, that this is over 100 years old structure, uh, the condition of uh, concrete in, in Centennial Hall is impressively good. Nevertheless, uh, in the cooperation with CNR uh, Research Group, we divided uh, the zones, we divided the area of Centennial Hall into six zones where we could apply uh, the Innova concrete products. And the zone number one and two is situated in entrance hall and Ukati consolidants developed in Cadiz University were applied. One layer in the zone number one and two layers in zone number uh, two. And so we created also non-treated reference areas to compare the results uh, obtained in the zone number one and in zone number two with the reference uh, areas. Zone number three is also situated in the entrance hall, but here we can see the different type of problem. Here we can see the uh, cracks which we uh, treated with the CSIC micromortars developed in Madrid uh, and CSGI cement pastes developed in Florence. During whole uh, the time um, where, where the project started, um, the crack was monitored uh, before and after application. Zone number four and five is situated in the interior of uh, the main structure of Centennial Hall. These are the pillars and the one layer of took consolidant developed uh, in the Crit University of Technology was applied. Uh, one and two uh, layers of mm, 
this type of product. And after that, we of course evaluate it. We are still evaluating the performance of this product. And the last zone is uh, zone number six, situated in near balconies, where uh, the same uh, micro mortars and cement pastes were applied, but dedicated for a bigger dimensional cracks. On the activities timeline in this table, you can see uh, the type of uh, treated area and the type of product which was applied and the specific dates uh, of uh, activities related mm, to, to, the, to the project, the time intervals also of the uh, evaluation of performance. Uh, so the cleaning uh, treatment was carried out by means of the brush and water, not using compressed air to avoid uh, the, the blowing in, uh, in the structure of the concrete, the, the dust, because there was a risk that we can do that. The application was carried out uh, one uh, one uh, week after uh, the cleaning process, and it was uh, the, the UKT consolidants were applied by means of the brush and spray. And here you can see on the photo how it looked like. And we also left untreated area to compare the results of uh, evaluation of performance. After one month uh, from the application, application, we started the evaluation of performance uh, by means of surface hardness using a rebound test. We also evaluated the surface uniformity uh, by means of ultra pulse velocity tests. Of course, all the measurements were carried out together with CNR scientific group. Uh, the surface water absorption was carried out by means of the sponge test. We checked uh, the surface water absorption, which, de which determines the risk of, um, uh, the, for example, of the corrosion of steel inside. Um, this, uh, this, this type of measurement was developed by CNR group. We checked the surface adhesion uh, using peeling tests. And uh, what is important in terms of the heritage structures also, um, we checked the color changes in time by means of the colorimetric measurements, uh, by means of this color uh, space, like the lightness, which is actually most important in this case, but also the green, uh, red color and uh, yellow, blue color. And in zone number uh, four and five, where similar products took uh, consolidants were applied. We performed cleaning uh, by means of the same uh, procedure. And after one week, we applied the products, one layer and two layers of, uh, of uh, took Creed consolidants. And checked the performance um with the rebound test uh, with the ultra pulse velocity test maybe you can see the different uh, type of equipment here because actually actually we were forced to do uh, it with the different um, with the different equipment because uh, all the project was carried out um during the corona time 
and uh, the CNR group couldn't come uh, in every time interval, so we had to uh, we had to go on with the measurements, but we had to find some um, equipment here in uh, Poland, and we correlated uh, the results together of our equipment and the equipment from the CNR in Italy group. And we discovered that actually we can perform these measurements, for example, ultra pulse velocity measurements with different type of equipment, not exactly the same. And we can check the trend of the changes in time. So it was also quite interesting uh, during this time to just to realize that we do not we do not have to use exactly the same equipment during all the time. We also checked the surface water absorption and performed the peeling tests. Intentionally, I do not present um, the results, uh, specific results, because there are so many results and they are still evaluated. Uh, I mean, all of these type of measurements. And it's a little bit too early to state that uh, um, some of results are 100% uh, uh, reliable. We have to um, analyze it together. Uh, we are meeting every every second week uh, with the uh, CNR um, uh, group, and we are discussing the results, and we will present it uh, in the final uh, report uh, of the project. Here you can see also uh, the surface adhesion tests where you can see some of material which appeared uh, on the blisters um, in, during the first interval of uh, the measurements. But after two more months, uh, the much less of product was taken uh, during uh, the peeling tests. So, Mm, maybe it needed more time to um, go through the structure of concrete. And uh, we checked also the colorimetric properties uh, of concrete after using after application of product. In zone number three, we prepared the cracks uh, with the alcohol, 40% 40, 40 alcohol, just to avoid the surface tension before application of product. And then we applied the micro mortars and cement pastes, which is presented here on the photos. The application of this type of products was conducted by the manager of heritage structures of Wrocław. And as you can see on the photo here, the reference sticks were applied um, before the monitoring of these cracks, which I will present you in a minute. This is how the cracks injections uh, looked like after application. And how the monitoring uh, looked like. Here we can see the highlighted uh, area with the reference uh, sticks. This is how the uh, special equipment, uh, special equipment um, delivered by uh, Rina Genova um, from Italy uh, looks like. And this is high resolution camera, which um, observes the changes of uh, in, in behavior of cracks in time. I mean, the displacements of cracks 
uh, actually not crux, but this reference uh, sticks. And here we can see on uh, this, mm, these images, the 3D image of uh, concrete surface, as well as uh, the displacements graph. And the crack injection was similar in uh, zone number six to zone number three, with this difference that we that the cracks was uh, bigger uh, in terms of dimension. And the cement paste and uh, micro mortars were applied using syringe. And other equipment. And the photographic documentation looks as follows. Thank you very much for your attention today. And I wish you a nice. Of course, if you were interested uh, in the results uh, of the evaluation of performance of the products, uh, please do not hesitate to contact me. Um, I'm open for the discussion and to, to share my impressions. Mm, so, yeah, once again, I send you my greetings. Bye bye. Okay, so many thanks to Mateus, even if he is not here today with us. Stefania wrote in the chat that the correct answer was 2006, so maybe one person yeah. uh, wrote it. Yeah, yeah. If I will remember, yeah. So okay. But some others were nearby. But we nearby. are, yeah, yeah. And so uh, many thanks to everyone. Uh, uh, next speaker uh, will be um, Eloquio de l'Orizonte by Lorenzo Fernandez Ordonez. But uh, before him, I will propose you to have a little break and see you again here at uh, 11.30. Bye. Thank see you. you soon. See you. Welcome again to the Innova Concrete School. We are ready to start again uh, with our next uh, presentations. Before giving the floor of our next speakers, we would like to ask a question of you, of course, because now uh, our next presentation will be about uh, architectures and uh, masterpieces in, uh, located in Spain. Before we will uh, start uh, to uh, learning more about uh, the Erodo del Horizonte uh, masterpiece uh, by Eduardo Torroja and then, uh, uh, sorry, by <laughs> a masterpiece in Gijon and then we will learn more about the Eduardo Torroja Institute. But uh, now um, Spania has shared the, the, the question about Chiida, that is the, the sculpture the, of um, of the Elogio dell'Orizonte, so Stefania? Yes, so you can uh, click in the link that I shared in the chat and you can start voting the question prepared uh, together with Lorenzo. The question is, did the sculptor Eduardo Cigita work often with concrete? So, uh, as uh, Sara anticipated, we will hear a presentation concerning the Elogio dell'Orizzonte, um, which is made in concrete, and Lorenzo will give us uh, more details uh, on the work that's been performed. But before this, uh, the question to you is if this sculptor works often, works often with concrete. So, please insert your answers. Uh, it is a multiple choice, yes or no, to see, um, to test if you know the sculptor, if you know which are the, his, um, uh, his monuments uh, or uh, objects. And uh, Lorenzo will explain us which is the correct one and why. So I would say just uh, additional um, 
10 seconds, 10 seconds to go and then uh, the floor will go to Lorenzo to see uh, which is the correct answer and why. So, 3, 2, 1. Voting are closed, so okay. many thanks for, to the people who voted. Yes. And then uh, we will leave the floor to Lorenzo Fernandez Ordonez, uh, that he is an architect and founder of Studio Guadiana, an architecture office established in 1997, which includes professionals from different disciplines to develop projects of architecture, landscaping, planning and engineering. Lorenzo has been professor of landscape and urbanism at the Alicante School of Architecture and is currently professor of construction and member of the PFC Tribunal at the Superior School of Art and Architecture of the European University of Madrid. So many thanks Lorenzo for being here with us today. Uh, thank you very much, Sara. Um... Stefania, uh, I'm pleased to be with you. Uh, I can you give me feedback if we are seeing the yeah yes we can hear you very well and see also your presentation. Okay. Just put it in a presentation mode in order to see it in full screen. Okay. Okay. You you see the presentation now in the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we see the presentation. Okay. Okay, so uh, as, as, as you said before, excuse me? Sorry, please. Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, uh, Chidida did work um, a lot, a lot with, with um, concrete, but to, to tell the truth, he he has only about uh, 20, less than 20 pieces in concrete, and he had a lot more pieces in steel uh, or um, ceramic uh, tiles, a lot of other materials. He mainly used concrete to gain, uh, to gain um, dimension. His work was often done like in a little model, and he wanted to escalate, to, to make it bigger. Uh, and for that purpose, he needed a material that could, uh, could be poor in, in a cast uh, as, as concrete. So he, he we, we can say he, he did a lot of works about uh, 15 to 20 works in concrete, but the main, his main work was on the steel, wood and, and earth. Uh, as you see here, the sculptures have a, a very a personal uh, form and all the, all the sculptures are, most of them are in, made in one piece. So they, they are poor in a, in a concrete, um, in, a, in a form, work form, uh, in the way that uh, you don't see the construction. I mean, in, the, in a normal building, you will see like the slabs or, or the faces of the concrete as you pour it. Here, everything was done like in one day or in one phase in order to see the, the sculptures as one entity, as something uh, uh, looking like a, really like, like a, a piece, not a accumulation of pieces. In, 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 El, in Gijón, in Elogio Horizonte, he, he found a place in which uh, Elogio del Horizonte means price of the horizon, of the, of the view. Uh, this is a very special place. It's a place where uh, the people of Gijón, which is in the north of Spain, um, were looking for the whales to pass along the Congs 
So this it was a, a place where poor people used to look to the horizon uh, long ago, really uh, from, from the beginning of the town in the Roman times. And in this special place, which later was taken by the military, uh, you see some forms there, that's for the batteries of the, of the guns of the, of the uh, military, which also look uh, very well to the horizon. He, he could uh, do uh, did this, this uh, uh, work of the uh, concrete. This is one of the biggest, is the biggest, is 10 meters high. Uh, it's about uh, 10 meters wide. And it's a piece which uh, you can see as, as a, somehow as a helmet. It's something that uh, steers you, the view to the, to the horizon. Okay. Before we started in this final phase of the Innova Concrete School, which is a product application and performance monitoring for, in order to validate all the, <clears throat> all the products of Innova, we did a, a first a, a, a work, some works before and, and have to explain it a little bit in order to understand why we apply some products and we don't apply other products. So this is like the, the, the chart flow of what we did. We, we, we went there to take uh, all the data of the sculpture. Uh, we made plans. We didn't have many uh, original plans and we didn't know uh, really what the problem of the sculpture was. And we had a lot of help here from the Torroja Institute because they did <clears throat> all the studies of the chemical and the, uh, from the examples. And, and uh, uh, because we are an uh, architectural study uh, office that uh, <clears throat> don't have that kind of knowledge and, and that, that was really useful for us. So we finally uh, took samples from the, from the uh, sculpture. We did a lot of uh, analysis in the surface. And with that, uh, finally, we came to a diagnosis of what was happening to the sculpture. Uh, the sculpture had this kind of detachment that you see in the right is uh, that's a rebar, is a concrete a steel bar which uh, corrodes, and when corrodes expands, and when expands breaks the concrete. So uh, also the the, the 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 sculpture had this kind of problem the of detachments from the corrosion of the rebars. Uh, we didn't know if the, if the problem was a carbonate, carbonation, uh, which is normally in, in, in concrete, uh, but uh, we found that <clears throat> the carbonation was only like 10 millimeters deep in the sculpture. So uh, we found finally that the chlorides um, <clears throat> go a lot deeper in the in the surface in the in the in the sculpture than the carbonation, and that the main problem what was was the chloride the the uh, home is a very industrial site with um, and is the, the presence of the industrial site is close to to this uh, the site of the, the sculpture and also we have the the sea. The, the salt coming from the sea. Uh, most of the uh, reinforcements was deep enough, uh, but about 3% uh, we took a lot of measure, measurement of the where the bars were, which depth we had, and only 3% of them were uh, <clears throat> less than 20 millimeters. Uh, the form is uh, rounded and, and it seems that in some cases 
the bar didn't stay in, in, in their place when they pulled the concrete. And, and so uh, there was some kind of a construction problem there. Uh, but the main areas have uh, more than uh, 30 millimeters and, and they were not uh, attacked yet by, by the, by the um, uh, 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 chlorides. Um, well, um, so our diagnosis was that the main problem, as I said, is the attack of the chlorides, which affect the reinforcements uh, in the areas with less than 30 millimeters of depth. Uh, and to prevent this, uh, we established a double action, which was first to desalinate, to take uh, all the all the chlorides from the from the uh, sculpture. This is uh, something that can be done uh, with uh, some parts, and is done well. It's, you have it's a, it has to be done by hand, but it can be it, it can be done um, as a normal practice in in restoration. And after that. Uh, is proposed to uh, do a general waterproofing of the surface. So, um, so here you see the main, in the left, the main pathologies we found, which are this chloride attack, the carbonation, in, in uh, uh, areas uh, very shallow. There, there is a stress of water in all the sculpture, and this is because the, the sculpture has a lot of porosity. Uh, we have also problems with graffitis and the cleaning of the graffitis. Uh, the, the town hall has been cleaning the, the graffitis and, and we have problems with that because the, the cleaning of the graffitis had uh, made uh, had taken the, the the surface of the of the of, of the sculpture of the of the sculpture which is uh, is very special and also because of the constant water we have uh, biofilms in the in the surface of the sculpture well this these uh, pathologies uh, uh, represent uh, go uh, um, do, do a damage a special damage some of them do the same damage and uh, because we have this pathology and this kind of damages we uh, decided that we had to um, test and we could use some of the Innova concrete uh, products, but we couldn't use other products that had no uh, use in the in the in, a, in our case because uh, they, they they were not going to uh, solve any pathologies or any damage. So. The materials we decided to use was for the uh, waterproofing, the yucca superhydrophobic product. We decided to test that as something that we could use in the whole surface once we restore the sculpture. And we think this is very interesting and something that uh, that is needed clearly in the, in the, for the sculpture in order to know, uh, to stop all the, all the main pathologies. And also where we have detachments, we uh, planted to use uh, CSIG uh, uh, cements, plus uh, cements, and also uh, Torroja uh, uh, micromolsters. Uh, because we have this graffiti, we started uh, cleaning the sculpture. Uh, as you see here, uh, we have a lot of help from uh, 
GCEI of Florence, uh, which uh, um, helped us with products uh, in order to uh, improve the cleaning. The graffiti, because we have this high porosity, the, the, the graffiti goes in the, in the little box of the, of the sculpture. And uh, this uh, product that uh, is called here a uh, nano restore cleaning polar coating key uh, seem uh, very useful in order to take uh, the, the graffiti without uh, damaging the, the surface of the sculpture. We had many problems here with the wind. This, uh, this is in a, in a cliff. Uh, we have a constant, uh, constant wind, and because of that, as you see, we have to put like a, a plastic bag on top of the of the product, so the the wind didn't um, they didn't take away the humidity of these products, uh, and they could go inside the the sculpture in order to uh, in order to uh, 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 take away the graffiti. So uh, the, once you go to the, the sidewalk, is uh, products that are easily applied in uh, an office or in a laboratory have a lot of problems, uh, like this one. Uh, we could, we could apply in small uh, portions the, the cleaning materials, but uh, to do a, a actual cleaning of the surface, a complete, uh, we have to wait, we'll have to wait for a, for a time without wind. Okay. Sorry, Lorenzo, if I interrupt you. Uh, could you please uh, uh, change uh, the screen uh, to see the bi uh, bigger presentation? Because now we see the slides a little bit uh, smaller. Uh, okay. Sorry. Oh, no, no. Uh, please. Uh, I, I thought uh, I was. Oh, let me see. Uh, Okay. Now it's better? Okay, yeah, now it's better. Oh. Thank you very much. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, I hope. Okay. So, uh, we we apply of Innova, Innova Concrete, uh, basically three products, which are the N12 Sika, uh, it's a mortar made by Torroja, which is the the one you see in the second images is which uh, you you see here uh, some two detachments one in the top with uh, without you don't see the bar uh, oh no excuse me uh, the 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 C uh, is is the one in the in the left you see we applied in a crack. Uh, you see here the crack before before the apply, applying the product, which you see here is almost one to two millimeters, and we apply it inside this crack, uh, and we monitor how uh, the performance of, of this of this mortar. We applied the CSGI uh, in these two other uh, places. In, you see here two, two photos which you, you can see before and after applying. And also we did a lot of uh, test uh, applies, uh, appliances with a Yucca PRPS, which is the super hydrophobic. Uh, for this, we did, we choose uh, East, which means that the sun was heating the, the sculpture, the, 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 the sample and in the north where the uh, sun didn't, uh, didn't uh, the sunrise 
didn't hit the, 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 the sample. Also, we did some, uh, we dissolved some of the areas in order to apply, uh, in order in order to apply the, the product in some dissolved and so, not some, some, some areas where we didn't dissolve. Also, we did uh, some samples of one and two layers. And we also did uh, apply other products in the market that could be uh, in order to compare the performance in relation with those products. OK. Uh, OK, you see, we had problems with, with the application of the the, the mortar, so we had to do a second uh, application of the mortars, both mortars, and you see here in the left is the photo before application, and in the right after, in the in the bottom is the first application. Uh, the top in the, the top one is the one from Torroja, uh, um, and below it. Is the is the uh, CSGI seven uh, okay? So uh, we did apply this this, and you see here like a paint a, a grid we took in order to measure uh, before application and after application. So every month, every month uh, since December twenty twenty, we we had an agreement with the University of Oviedo in order to take uh, measurements of the uh, of this test and we measure humidity which you can see in the left uh, this grid and you can see there is a, a pattern of humidity here uh, also we uh, we took values of temperature to to see in in the time uh, how if it has any relation, we did took a resistivity uh, before and after, and inside the 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 mortars, the mortars, uh, and also we took detailed photography in order to see if the contact of the mortar was good in the in and, and continuous, uh, and also we did a contrast sponge peeling test, this, this uh, peeling test only in the, in the super hydrophobic, uh, ultra velocity colorimeter, which was only done in the, uh, because uh, was it doesn't have any, any sense in the, in, only in the super hydrophobic. And also we took some uh, images of the thermal camera of thermal images in order to see if there was any uh, problem below that could be shown by the thermal camera. Okay, so here you see how we did a grid that we, we, we maintain along the time and we were taking uh, measures along, along the time. Here you see patterns of humidity. Uh, we did this grid. Uh, you see in the left is the lower part and in the right is the higher part of the um, uh, you see the temperature and, and the humidity here. Uh, here is the resistivity in horizontal positions and uh, in the in the center in the both horizontal and vertical linking uh, both measurement we did this every every month and also inside the I mean inside the area of the mortars here are uh, the samples of the UP the ultrasonic uh, measurements both uh, in the low and the and the high which means the first phase and the second phase of applying mortars uh, uh, well and now we are dealing uh, with the with the uh, the data we with the data we obtain uh, in this in this uh, 
product application in order to validate uh, the products that were applied. Perfect. Okay. Many thanks, Lorenzo. Thank you. you clap your hands and uh, see if someone has any questions. As usual, uh, please write in the chat uh, your question, if you have any to, to ask to Lorenzo. We wait just a few seconds to see if someone has uh, uh, any, any information, any, any question to ask, but uh, I think that uh, maybe everything is clear. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sara and Stefania. Uh, sorry for any delay. In, in sending you my information. I'm really sorry, I apologize. Uh, we are now with a, too much work here, uh, um, but uh, the next uh, month we will focus, we will focus in the Innova Concrete in order to finish everything. Thank you very Many much. Thank, thank, thank you, you Lorenzo. So if you don't have an, any other any question to Lorenzo? We continue with our next uh, presentations. And before um, passing, uh, giving the stage to our colleagues of uh, the Toro High Institute, Stefania yeah, has a question. Yes, so the link is the same that I shared previously. This is the last question for today related to the presentation, which will be given shortly. The question is related to the Eduardo Toroja Institute. And the question is, in which Eduardo Toroja Institute structure were finally validated the selection of novel and novel concrete products? So this question is uh, in case you have already seen some information on the project. Um, which probably you have seen uh, since you subscribe to this uh, school, uh, the possible answers are car park pergola, window frames, uh, Doda Decaedron. So please insert your answers and then our speakers will explain us which is the correct answer and why. So I will just uh, start the countdown. I would uh, set uh, one minute in order to uh, let you think about it a bit and then uh, we can then uh, start with the presentation. So, so let's see which are your answers. For now I see that uh, the most voted one is the car, uh, car park pergola. So um, let's see if we have others that uh, have different answers to include. Um, let's see, and then our speakers will explain us why. So wow. we have one. one. We have one for the decaedron. Let's see which is the correct one. No one selected window frames. So speakers get ready to explain us which is the correct one and why. We have 10 seconds left until the voting is closed. So if you have something to add, you can do it now. Otherwise, the voting will be closed in one second. And now it's closed. So the winner answer is car park pergola. So you are concerning which, um, uh, which part of the Duarte Toroja Institute were uh, selected to validate the selection of you know, products and then we can continue with the presentation. Okay, so our, our Innova Concrete colleague will explain and will tell us uh, which is uh, the correct answer but before I just want to briefly introduce them. We have Juan Kepo de Llano, he's an architect and head of the construction quality unit at the Eduardo Torroja Institute of Construction Sciences. He has worked in different lines such as safety of use, accessibility, industrialization, or the use of wood in construction. And he is the director of the journal Informes de la Construcción, edited by the Eduardo Torroja Institute. Many thanks for being here, Juan. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you very well. And then we have also Elena Frias. 
today with us. Hello. She's, hello, Elena. Good morning. She's an architect, uh, PhD. She's responsible for the technical area of safety, news, and accessibility at the Eduardo Toraja Institute in the CSIC in the development of the scientific technical support works and applied and pre normative research. Her team is specialized in risk analysis in the use of buildings and universal design criteria with particular focus on retrofitting of existing buildings in, uh, and heritage. So many thanks for being here. And our third speaker is uh, Paola Carmona Quiroga. Many mm -hmm. thanks and welcome. Uh, she's a geology from the, um, she take a PhD in geology from the Complutense University of Madrid. And throughout her professional career, she has worked at two Spanish National Research Council institutes, the Eduardo Toroja Institute, and currently the Institute of Physical Chemistry, Rocca Solano, and at the School of Geography and Environment of the University of Oxford. She has participated in characterization and durability studies of build heritage materials including lime mortars, stone and cementitious materials, and has validated a great variety of novel protective treatment. So many thanks and welcome uh, for being here to all of you. Thank you. Now the stage is Thank yours. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I will share if I have any problems. Wait a minute. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Can you see the yes. presentation? We can see it in presentation mode. Okay, full screen? Yes, yes full screen. Perfect. So the stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Uh, well, Sarah already presented us. It's a pleasure for us to participate in this workshop and to explain the positive results achieved in our case study. First, we will introduce the importance of the case study, the Eduardo Torroja Institute, and then uh, we'll describe the final phase of the project, the products application, the performance monitoring, and the validation of the Innova Concrete products. For us, it's very nice to explain this, the importance of this building because it's our workplace. So uh, we love it, we value it a lot, and we almost live in it, so it's, it's very nice. Well, uh, Eduardo Torroja uh, was one of the most prominent international proponents of the history of progress in civil construction and architecture in the golden decades of the modern movement. He played a major role in scientific and technical revolution that preluded the development of reinforced and pre-stressed concrete in the first half of the 20th century and also the evolution in the construction industry, in the structural typologies, in the new aesthetics. It was really uh, very important. Uh, he was a designer, he was a scientist, a researcher, a manager, a teacher. Uh, he is the author of many iconic works. Some of them you can see in this uh, slide. Uh, for example, I don't know if you can see my pointer. Uh, no, no. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay, for example, we have the uh, Algeciras Market, which was one of his young works with the architect Manuel Sánchez Arcas. And the building is an octagonal plan with a laminar concrete dome of about 42 meters in diameter and only nine centimeters thick in the central area. Other, for example, uh, is the Fronton Recoletos, which is this one to the right. Also very interesting building which he designed jointly with the architect Secundino Zuazo. And the design to cover the rectangular space of the court and, and grandstand is the most innovative aspect of this project. The solution given to the cover consisted of two asymmetric cylinders with a thickness of only eight centimeters. And to meet the requirements of natural lightning, uh, two large longitudinal skylights oriented towards the north were used, formed by lattices made up of equilateral triangles of reinforced concrete, which you can see here. It's a pity that this building uh, was uh, suffered a lot in the, during the Spanish Civil War and well, is not longer uh, in its place, so we, we lost it. 
and I think the the most uh, famous work now is the Zarzuela race cars, which you have at the left, designed by uh, Torroja and architects Arniches and Dominguez. And uh, it's a very nice example of Madrid's rationalism and is considered the last architectural masterpiece of the time of the Spanish Republic. <clears throat> and for example, in these um, uh, sheets of concrete sheets, which are hyperbolic paraboloids, they have 12 meters of flight and the cantilever thickness is only five centimeters. So you can see this, this is the kind of works that uh, Eduardo Torroja uh, did. And well, in 1934, in order to improve the construction techniques, he founded with other experts, the Technical Institute of Construction, which now is called uh, Eduardo Torroja Institute. That was a private sector organization created in Spain to steer further and publish research on construction and related areas to further foster progress and promoting the use of concrete and cement. Uh, since its creation, this institute constitutes a landmark of industrial and building research in concrete, both nationally and internationally, and a model of interdisciplinary collaboration between different construction disciplines. It was an historic moment of radical transformation. New materials and construction system were in place. Uh, the main protagonist was the concrete, but it required uh, development, technical and scientific knowledge. And this is uh, what uh, Torroja did. Some years later, after the foundation of the Institute in 1951, uh, uh, Eduardo Torroja promoted the, con the building of a laboratory for construction sciences, which is, which is the building we are talking about, with the most advanced equipment and techniques at that time and this is the building that has been chosen to validate the products of the project. Well, concerning the, <clears throat> the concept of the building, uh, well, the architects, this building is from Torroja and two architects that were part of the Institute. And well, they used it like an experimental workshop. We will see many many um, industrialized elements that were uh, tried and researched in the construction of the building. And talking about the concept of the building, uh, they thought that the research develops in two closed fields. We have on the one hand, the theoretical study of the problems where uh, you have the, the scale of the man and the, some, the spaces are like, like the ones you see in the photo. And on the other hand, you have the, the experience to solve this problem, the experiments. Uh, the scale is very different. The scale is the machine scale, so you need big uh, spaces. And also they wanted that the, these two different spaces were, should be flexible because um, scientific research has to adapt to what is being studied. And this changes a lot a long time. So they needed this flexibility for the uh, big spaces, these this spaces are for the machines, there's no really big problem because uh, big spaces, high spaces are always very flexible. But for these other spaces, the spaces for the man, the theoretical development of the uh, research, they, they uh, tried some solutions. For example, as Elena will explain, uh, the uh, use of a modulus and uh, prefabricated elements all of the same size so uh, building can change very easily and now uh, elena will continue thank you juan uh, for this purpose here uh, in this site uh, he built a modern uh, functional style building uh, designed by the architects uh, chegaray and barbero uh, and in order to systematically organize the works, as Juan says, uh, simplify the monitoring and economize the tasks, different constructive uh, systems uh, were tested and, and used. Precast concrete pieces uh, were preferably used to standardize the construction methods. 
Uh, in this uh, sense, the general layout for the organization of the work is based on a single module of 1.60 meters. Next. Uh, small workshops uh, to produce precast concrete uh, pieces were mounted on the same plot of, of the land and uh, near the, the building to control the complete uh, method of, of production. Next. The importance of this pilot experience uh, was disseminated in course, in different courses, seminars, and scientific uh, journals. And the most singular precast concrete elements of this building uh, are on one hand the window frames. Uh, here you are the, the window frames. Uh, using the same pieces and made of a precast cement mortar, leave a gap between these pieces and later concrete it uh, between these in order to be part of the resistant uh, structure of the of the building. Next, and another one, the flooring pieces, 1.60 meter long, uh, supported on metal beams, uh, were made of precast concrete uh, this time, and in structural pieces finished uh, in police the terrazzo. Uh, many other prefabricated elements in concrete, uh, in cement mortar, in plaster, etc., were tested and, and used as floorings, uh, ceilings, door frames, bristles, gargoyles, lampposts, etc., as you hear in this uh, slide. To contrast with the simplicity and functionality of uh, the main composition of the building, Singular spaces uh, were designed on the extreme point of the of the plant, uh, the auditorium, the water tank finished in in a stone, the management area or the dining uh, dining room are some example of this. No? But in this case, structural reinforced concrete models uh, were tested and used. Next. Um, one example of this is the coal tank with an undable uh, plastic value and located in the main entrance became the icon of the institute. Technically, it's a folder structure of reinforced concrete in a form of, of a dodecahedron to store the annual heating needs of the coal. Uh, retaining walls, another structural reinforced concrete element, were built to regularize the land and supported on these ones, these retaining walls. Pergolas were placed to frame and unify the different pieces of the of the building. This uh, pergola was was designed as a solution of a continuous sequence of reinforced concrete, uh, taking the shape of a seven. And um, finally, another singular element is a shell concrete structure, which was made to commemorate the celebration of the International Association of Laminary Structures in 1969. Uh, it were, was totally built uh, in only one week, and frequently uh, it has been used as an exterior chapel. Hello everyone, that now is my turn. So of all the three elements that Juan and Elena have already presented, three of them, the cell structure, the window frames, and uh, the seven shape pergola were selected to characterize um, his composition and possible pathologies um, with both laboratory uh, studies and also field measurements with the idea of eventually evaluate the Innova concrete products. Um, represent as you can see here. No, these are all the kind of tests we perform. Representative uh, core samples were drawn from uh, hidden places, and we study those samples in the laboratory. We characterize the composition of the aggregates, the aggregates, sorry, the composition of the cementitious matrix. We also um, determine the porosity or the 
uh, same and aggregate ratio, to name a few properties, and uh, the field measurements, as you can see here already, uh, consisting in assessing uh, possible structural anomalies by comparing the original uh, design drawings to the element as is presently stand by a 3D laser scan. Uh, next, please. We also uh, determine the reinforcement bar position uh, and the thickness of the concrete cover with a ground penetrating radar. Also, we characterize the corrosion of the steel embedded in the concrete with different uh, uh, procedures. Via, well, we determine the corrosion potential, the corrosion rate, and also the concrete resistivity. And because water uh, drives um, corrosion, the relative moisture of the a concrete elements also was uh, determined with a laser uh, moisture meter and uh, also we determined the carbonation depth with uh, the um, uh, phenotimostalina test. And next, please. Um, the surface hardness also was measured uh, with the Smith's hammer. You can see here in the at the bottom of the, the slide. We also um, uh, um, characterize the homogeneity of the samples uh, with uh, ultrasonic uh, tester. We determine the ultra ultrasonic uh, pulse velocity and also the modulus of elasticity. And uh, through uh, infrared thermal imaging, you can see here in the, of the, the image of the window, we spot heat losses to map moisture distribution. And uh, next, please. Next, oh, okay. Yeah, please. And um, of all the three singular elements, no, uh, the car park, as you some of you already guessed, was the element that was chosen to validate Innova Concrete uh, products. Next, please. So, I'm oh, no, sorry. Uh, can you go? Uh, okay. Um, so we. It was chosen. It was chosen this element for various reasons. One of them is, is barai pathologies, as you can see already here in the map of damage. You can see the cracks. You can see the corrosion and biological colonization, and also because of the extension that uh, is quite big, enable us to to apply the uh, a variety of, of treatments. Next, please. Before uh, applying the the treatments, it was necessary to clean the the paint because the pergolas are uh, painted in, in white and using as you can see here in the picture um, a hydro cleaning method we also test in a small area as you can see at the at the bottom of the slide uh, we are, um, tested some product from tcgi to um, to remove uh, in the more delicate areas the, the paint so we thought the points of the structure um, and also uh, in total we apply uh, uh, for um, products, more or less, but for the reparation of, um, of the identified pathologies. Next, please. And uh, the area treated was of about, as you can see here, more than 3.5 uh, square meters. Uh, next, please. Um, finally, as you can see here, we monitor uh, various properties such as uh, the color chains, um, the chemical and mechanical stability of the concrete, the impermeability. And after one month of the application of the treatments, five months and nine months. And um, you can see here, if you click, click next, thank you, a list of all the parameters that we have uh, measured there, we have checked. That's, that's the complete list. Next, please. Um, just a reminder of the treatment that we have already used since the and when well, see you, I think already have heard of them. So we apply a consolidant, the UKT, and also an, a super hydrophobic coating, the UKTPS. Both are alkosylane uh, based impregnex, impregnex, impregnexions. Sorry, next please. The, the main results of the application of those uh, both treatments are very positive. As you can see here in the upper uh, left hand side, the superhydrophobic coating reduces the surface water absorption around 90%. Neither of the treatments modify the color of the concrete. Uh, as you can see here, the global color variations, this delta E, uh, were lower than three units, indication the consolidant, and therefore are not visible to the naked eye. 
power between uh, these 2.5 and 5 units. In that case, for the super hydrophobic coatings, these variations are visible, uh, but can be considered acceptable. And uh, both treatments, as you can see, also with the, in the surface hardness test, they don't change the, the this property of the, the surface of the material. And uh, both treatments perfectly adhere to the to the surface. Uh, next, please. So we would like to emphasize uh, one treatment that was specifically developed at the Eduardo Toroja Institute, and it was introduced yesterday by our colleague Ines Garcia Lodeiro. It is the repair micro mortar that is aimed at filling cracks higher than two uh, millimeters and even five millimeters, depending on the type of sun, as you can see here in the slide. Um, the material uh, was designed to be compatible with the original substrate, with this concrete, uh, with similar properties, not only monoporosity, but thermal conductivity or, and also the mechanical properties. The color originally was white, but to be adjustable to specific uh, cases with pigments. Next, please. Mm. You can see here the results of the validation of this uh, micro mortar. The results were also uh, like the previous treatments and very successful. Not only the mortars uh, increase the ultrasonic velocity. If you click uh, one, please click. Yes, yes, I, I did. How, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You can see here how the um, how increase the let me. Okay, no. The ultrasonic uh, velocity when uh, after applying the treatments, T0 represents one month after the application of the treatments, T4 um, five months, and T8 eight, 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 nine months of the application of the of the treatments. And you can see here also how the micro mortar uh, uh, reduces the, the water absorption, as you can see here, around 80% and retains this efficiency after night months. And also we can see in the infrared uh, uh, images how the, um, uh, the chemical admixtures that were introduced in the matrix uh, induce the hydrophobic properties of the, of the mortar. And you can see here that the material, uh, the micro mortar, get less wet than the original concrete, as you can see here no, in, the, in the infrared images. Um, next, please. Um, the last kind of protective treatments that we would like to present no, the value, uh, here, the evaluation results of this treatment, is the corrosion inhibitor. We apply them, uh, we apply it in different ways, either in aqua solutions or also embedded in nanoparticles, uh, mixed with a consolidant or applied prior to micro motor application. So we have like um, different, um, as you can see here, different means of application, application of the treatment. Next, please. Um, as you can see here, well, these are the main results of the corrosion inhibitor. As we as said before, we measure the, uh, the uh, resistivity, the um, potential the corrosion, potential corrosion. But I'm here I'm going to present the results of the corrosion rate, which are the most significant ones. And um, prior to the corrosion analysis, we identify um, uh, nine sections in the pergola. You can see here in the in the picture how the, the pergolas are. You can see here from uh, one to the ten, the, the areas this were divided, um, uh, in, and here are the results in the south uh, face of two of the pergolas: the pergola fourteen at the top and the pergola fifteen at the bottom. And uh, treatments, those treatments, the corrosion treatments were applied mainly in the vertical section of the pergola. As you can see here in this kind of gray, green, and gray colors, and um, in pergola catorce. Uh, sorry, in paragraph 14, the one in the upper part of the slide, we applied the um, inhibitor in aqua, uh, the, the inhibitor, sorry, in aqua solution. And after that, we applied the micro mortar. In, um, in the pergola 15, it's different. We apply the nano, the uh, inhibition, pardon, the corrosion inhibitor inside nanoparticles that were inside the UCA consolidant, UCA T consolidant. And um, as I said before, here are the results of the corrosion rate, the e core. And with both types of application, we observe, uh, in the, you can see here in the right side, um, down, um, we can see a decrease of the uh, corrosion rate with both types uh, of application. And as a curiosity, um, 
you can see here that super hydrophobic coating was applied on the top of the of the um, uh, pergola yeah, it's marking pink and we couldn't take any measurement there because of the electrolytic isolation of the porous and network of the concrete that was uh, produced by the by the treatment um, next please and finally we like to summarize we can conclude that the the growing awareness of the cultural significance of 20th century uh, concrete constructions and works makes imperative an adequate strategy for the preservation uh, for future based on the continuous monitoring and specific conservation treatments. After a preliminary characterization and diagnosis a phase of three singular elements at the headquarters of the Eduardo Torroja Institute, application and validation of a selection of novel products developed in the Innova Concrete uh, project was carried out. And this in investigation presents the validation results of four conservation treatments, a consolidant and a super hydrophobic coating, a corrosion inhibitor, and a repair micromortar that were applied alone or combined after nine months of outdoor exposure. And um, their chemical stability and aesthetic uh, compatibility and efficiency has, and durability has uh, been successfully proven, but in, such, in situ non-destructive testing. And uh, finally, next, please. We would like to, to say goodbye with the motto of Eduardo Torroja, uh, about, okay, which is Technica Plures Opera Unica, which is about multidisciplinarity, which is our, our team. And we would like to thank you for your attention and um, any question that you may have, we are here to, to answer. Thank you. Many thanks to all. Many thanks, Paula, Elena, and Juan. So if you have any question, please write in the chat. In the meantime, I read that uh, some of the participants uh, thanks uh, all the speakers for the interesting presentations. So we are happy that uh, you enjoyed this, uh, this day presentation. And uh, if anyone has to ask something to Paula, to Juan or to Elena, please feel free to, to write and we will read uh, your question. We we'll give you a few seconds to see if someone uh, has particular question to do or, or maybe everything is clear, we don't know. I think that maybe everything is clear for everyone. So, yeah. Okay. Yes, Juan. Sorry, me. Uh, do you do you want to say something? No, no. It was it was okay. very nice, I think. And if everything is clear, we are okay with that. Yeah, perfect. We have uh, different information also on about the Institute Toroja on the Innova Concrete website. So if you want to know more, please visit our website to discover more. And we remind you that uh, in, uh, in December we will have our final workshop in Spain. You are all invited. Uh, registrations are open on our website. The event is free. So if you have uh, any other question information and maybe you live in Spain, please uh, uh, join our event in Cadiz and uh, you can ask more information questions to our speaker also uh, during this event. Okay, many thanks guys. I think that there are no questions uh, from our um, participants. So, um, just to conclude uh, the, the event of today, I would like to remind that our Gather Town space is open. You can visit it uh, this afternoon and also tomorrow morning, but uh, in particular this afternoon, I remind you that in Booth Blue, there will be our colleague, Lorenza Carabba. She's an expert in EU funding. She supports companies to write proposals. And uh, in particular, she's expert in cultural heritage projects. So if you're curious to know more about how um, a new funded project works, 
or uh, about the new polls uh, in Horizon Europe, uh, you can uh, join our event on Gather Town, go to Booth Blue and meet Lorenza that will be there from 2 to 4 p.m. Many thanks, many thanks for being here and uh, if you want we can see you tomorrow afternoon with our third day of conference that will be dedicated to the awareness of concrete cultural heritage. Thanks to all and have a nice day. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.